Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today, back to working on these little vice jaws we've been uh, working on for a while now. Need to get these things knocked out. Just got a couple of little more procedures to do on them, and I think they'll be ready to go. So, uh, start with, we've already machined them. We've already got the groove milled in the back. We've already got the serrations put on it. Uh, what's left to do is I need to deck the top of these over on the mill machine. These are just a little bit thicker than what they need to be. And we want to get those down to size. And then the other thing we need to do machining wise is uh, drill the three holes and do the counter sinks that they'll mount into. And we have some new screws uh, that are going to go into these as well. So over on the milling machine we go and uh, we're going to start with the milling. All right, I've got this set up over here in the mill machine. All I want to do is I'm just going to drop my quill down until I touch off on the part there. That'll give me a zero to start. And I just want to take 50 thousandths, not very much, just a little bit off of that thickness. And uh, we're just going to use this face mill to go across there. So let me uh, raise my table up 50 thousandths. We'll just go right here and that should be it. All right, let's uh, ease across there. There we go. That should do it. So uh, I'm going to take that over to the uh, grinder and just kind of put a little relief around that outside edge, get the burr off, and uh, then we'll get set up to drill and countersink our holes. So next I need to drill my three holes in here, and uh, one of them is going to be in the center from end to end, and it's also going to be in the center of this trough that we've got through here. So center this way and center this way. The two other holes are an inch and three quarter off of that center line. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in here first, use an edge finder to kind of figure out where we're at in this thing. Uh, we'll find the edge on this side uh, and then come into the center. Uh, we'll just use a digital readout to measure in. And then we'll also use the edge finder on both sides of this uh, inside trough and um, find the center of it. And then that'll give us a zero point, uh, which will be here. And then we'll just use dial off of that uh, inch and three quarter each direction uh, to locate our holes. So let's get our edge finder going. So if you never use one of these, they're pretty neat. What I'm gonna do is just uh, come over here, kind of to the edge of the part. And if you notice that bottom is kind of on a spring, kind of flopping around and when you bring it up to the point as soon as it becomes perfectly tangent with that it's going to scoot over do you see how it scooted over and uh, I'm going to use my digital readout I'm going to zero it out right there and I'm going to do it again and yeah we're on the same measurement I usually do it a couple of times just to make sure we're where we need to be so that is again tangent are touching on here and here. I know this is a half inch, so I need to move over a uh, half, a quarter of an inch, 250 thousandths. So again, I'm just gonna use my digital readout and we'll dial in 200 and, whoops, went a little bit too far. 250, let's see, right there. So that's my zero. That is basically, again, right there on the edge. So from there, we'll come in two and a half inches and I just zeroed my digital readout and I can just move that over and I can just dial that right in. I'm just gonna read the measurement right off the digital readout. And let's see right there, perfect, two and a half inches. So, and I put a little Sharpie marker on there, kind of roughly where we needed to be. So now what I need to do is find the center of this trough. So we'll just, uh, come in here I'm going to drop this down in between there it'll fit and again we'll just uh, get that edge finder going 
I'm gonna come over to the back side. And there's my edge. I'm gonna zero my digital readout in the Y axis. Let me just uh, do that again to verify. Yep, we're good. I'm gonna come to the other side. And we're at 121. We'll do that again. All right, 121. So I'm gonna stop. And I'll just use the half function on the digital readout to get it right into the middle. So again, 121, uh, we're just gonna hit the half button here. I'm gonna select my Y axis. It divides that number in half. And now all I gotta do is just take my um, number to zero and we should be right in the middle there. Get two tenths out. I'll fool around with that and get it dead nuts on, but all right, so I've got a center drill in here. I just want to use that to kind of spot my uh, center of the hole there. Just enough to get a little dimple in there to get that drill bit started on. And then we're gonna switch over here to a drill bit and drill that hole. Now, the um, size of the screws are 5 16. So I'm gonna drill these 11 30 seconds, which is just a little bit oversized. Just kind of make sure we got plenty of uh, room in there if things don't line up exactly right. But uh, we'll go ahead and get this, these holes drilled. All right, there's one. Go ahead and uh, swap that out. Put our center drill back in there. Out of P. All right, so we're going to go over inch and three quarters. So I'll just use the um, digital readout. Again, we're on zero right now. So uh, we'll just uh, bump that over. One, seven, five, oh. Right there. Now, a lot of people say I should use a spot and drill rather than a center drill. A center drill, they say, oh, that's for making a center on a lathe. Technically, you're correct. Um, but as long as you're just putting a spot in there and you're not really putting the whole center in it, a center drill works fine as a spotting drill. And I have plenty of center drills. I don't have a lot of spotting drills, so I use them. So they're, they're perfectly fine. Some people get upset about that, but you know, as long as you're not drilling down real deep, as long as you're just spotting it, center drill works just fine. All right, so now we'll go back um, inch and three quarter in the other direction. So first we'll go back to the center and that should be zero again. And then we'll go negative uh, one and three quarters. 1.750. There we go. All right, I'm gonna get the other one drilled out and uh, I'll do that one off camera and then we'll come over here and get our uh, counter sinks put on that side. All right, I'll be back. So we're getting ready to put our counter sinks in. If you look, our screws have that flared out kind of 60 degree counter recess in there. And we just got a special cutter here that's made to do those. And we just wanted to make these just deep enough that the, uh, the screw um, goes just a little bit beneath the surface of the jaw. So let's see here. I tend to like to run these a little bit lower RPM. And we'll just kind of come in here and let it kind of work its way down through there. Okay, what I might need to do is uh, put a stop in this vise so that I have something that's kind of hitting up against, not flapping around. Let me get that set up. But you can kind of see what we're going after here. All right, let's try that. I just got something in there to kind of 
help it out there. Much better. And a little bit deeper to get where we need to be. it and basically all I'm doing is taking that down almost to the flange there so um, we can keep them all fairly consistent let's get these other ones done verify up oh, just a little bit more I think All right, that's below the surface. One more to go. We got them there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one and I think we'll have our machining done. We'll just need to do our heat treat. So there we go with our uh, machining all done. Next step is we need to do a heat treat on these. Now, I made these out of A2 tool steel. Uh, right now they're in this annealed state, so it's in a soft state where we can do the machining. We want to harden it up and get it to a suitable hardness for the uh, vice jaws. And forgive me, I don't remember which Rockwell that is. I've got that information somewhere. I can retest my original and, and, and try to match it. Uh, but the process here is we put it in the heat treat oven. We heat it up to a certain recipe for A2 tool steel. We're going to make it super hard. And um, then we will temper it by heating it up to a lower temperature and letting it cool down. And that will get it to the hardness that we are desiring. So in this heat treat process, we're going to be heating it up to such high temperatures that it's going to want to oxidize and turn colors. And uh, you can get some scale on these things, etc., cetera, uh, that kind of ruin the finish. So to prevent that, what I'm going to do is I've got some uh, stainless steel foil here. And we're going to wrap this up in here, basically get these inside a package that is airtight. I'm going to put a little strip of paper in there so that any oxygen that is inside there will burn and that will consume any oxygen that's sealed up inside of this foil and basically prevent any other oxidation from taking place. So what we'll do is uh, I'm just gonna put them together here and we'll just kind of wrap these up. Let me get a little strip of paper. Again, that will be consumed during the uh, heat treat and that will basically take any oxygen that's in there and uh, convert it to something else. So um, I'll tell you what, I like to kind of do this more like this, where I can kind of fold that up on the top and get a nice seal. So let's do that. We will cut this full. We'll just start folding this up like such. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to get that fairly tight. Get as much oxygen out of there as we can. We'll fold the ends up, do the same thing here. Heat treat oven ready to go and that should keep any oxygen out. And again, that paper will burn up in there and suck any oxygen that is in and get it out. All right, let's get our oven programmed and ready to go. To do our heat treat, I'm gonna use my uh, Hotshot 360 uh, heat treat oven. This is uh, one that was designed by Stan Zinkowski over at uh, Barzy Industrial, uh, another YouTube guys, a uh, host of Barzy Industrial, our Barzy Summer Bash every year, good friend of mine. He actually um, sold the rights to these out to American Rotary. They created a company, American Kiln, that they're actually selling, ma manufacturing and selling these ovens. And uh, they're nice little ovens for doing heat treat work. So um, let me go ahead and turn my controller on. Um, 
I've got a program in here for doing A2 tool steel. This is a, you can program this uh, controller and I apologize, I don't have the recipe here in front of me, but it's gonna basically ramp up slowly over time, uh, following a certain format, go up to a temperature hold, go up to a temperature hold, go up to a temperature hold, uh, which is a standard uh, formula for A2 and uh, then it'll cool down. Uh, once it cools down uh, to a certain point, we pull it out. And because this is air hardening, you just let it sit out in the open air in a, in a room temperature, let it cool down and it will harden like that. So we're just gonna put the whole packet here in the oven and we will go in here to our program uh, this is our program. I want to run that. Yes, run. Uh, yes, and enable our heat. And you can see here the heat is this bottom line is our target. So you can see it's ramping up. The top number is the actual temperature inside the oven. So the heating uh, elements have just turned on and it's going to run up to that and basically it's going to chase that number all the way up and follow that program. It's going to heat it up rather slowly, hold it at it for a certain period of time. And then, like I said, at the end of that time, we'll pull it out and uh, let it actually sit in the air. And then after that's done, after it's cooled down, we will come back and temper it. And there's another program for that. And it's basically just heated up to a certain temperature, lower temperature, let it hold for a little while and then pull it out and let it normalize and you should be at whatever hardness you're shooting for. So there ain't nothing to do now except to let this thing run. It's gonna take several, several hours to go through this heat treat process. So uh, we'll be back later on. Well guys, this is the next day. The heat treat is finished, but I did wanna kinda of go over the recipe that was used because I know somebody's gonna have a question on that. And uh, I dug up my information. So basically what we did was we had this programmed where it was gonna heat up to about, but well, the, the recipe says between 1450, 1450 and 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, ramp it up to there, let it hold it for about an hour to just kind of let everything normalize. And then from there, the temperature raises up between 1750 and 1800 degrees. And I think I had it programmed uh, at 1775, right in between those. Again, hold it for a couple of hours at that level. I think it says at least one hour per inch of thickness. I usually go a little bit on the long side just to be sure that we've got good uh, penetration all the way inside that part. Once you get there, you pull the part out and you let it cool in the air. Now, what I did was I just kind of laid it across this little piece of metal where it wasn't on a heat sink or anything. And I turned a fan on it and just kind of blew some air on it and let it cool down to where you can touch it with your hand. From there, uh, you put it back in the oven and now we're gonna temper it. So when we harden it, it's gonna be super hard. Uh, for A2, I think, what does it say right out of there? It's gonna be between Rockwell 62 and 65, which is really hard. We wanna get it back down to about a Rockwell 50, 50, somewhere 50, 55 is kind of what I'm shooting for, which is what the original vice jaw uh, was measuring. So to temper it, I got a scale here for different hardnesses. We actually heated it up to about 850 degrees, let it soak again for a couple of hours, and then just turned it off and let it cool down nice and slow. And that should drop that uh, hardness down a little bit. It's still real hard, uh, but it's not as brittle. It's gonna be more tougher uh, when you actually do the tempering. So anyway, it's been sitting, uh, according to the thermometer in here, it's 83 degrees inside the here. Yeah, no problem, I can pull that out it's actually still just a little bit warm. Uh, and that's been in there overnight, but I mean, I can easily pick it up with my hands, uh, no, no problem at all. Let's go pull it out and see what it looks like. All right, this uh, full wrap gets kind of beat up in the process. I actually double wrap this. So let's pull it on out now. All right. 
Got a little bit of oxidation in here, not too bad. But um, those don't look too bad. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is take these over to the wire wheel and just kind of wire wheel them and clean them up a little bit. Um, and then we'll come and actually use my hardness tester and check the hardness of them now that everything's uh, been heat treated. I'll be right back. All right, so I've got a little PTC hardness tester, and uh, this is a this one gives you a rough idea of uh, the hardness. And what you do is you start out by making a little dent in there, and this is just a little spring loaded. This is calibrated. It's got a blunt end on the end, and that makes a little indention in the metal. And like I said, it's calibrated. And then you use uh, this little tool. It's like a little telescope. It's got a light in here, and you look down through it. And when you do, uh, there's a scale that is basically imposed over the top of that little indention you made. And you can put one edge of the, of the indention on the bottom line and you read up here on the scale uh, a rough estimate of the uh, hardness. Each, each one of the lines is uh, five um, Rockwell points and you just kind of have to estimate in between them, but it gives you it gives you a, in the ballpark of where you're at So let me get in here and take a look and see what we got So I'm gonna start by turning the light source on and then I'm gonna kind of put this over that indention and I look down in here And get it lined up and we are Hey, well, let me move that around just a little bit. I couldn't see a clear definition of the uh, of the edge of the hole. Okay, this will be better. This measuring is right on 50 Rockwell. And that's actually... You know, the original was between somewhere between 45 and 50. And uh, this one's measuring looking like it's right on 50. So I think we're pretty darn close uh, to what the hardness was on the original one. So I'm happy with that. There we go. There was the original one that was sent in as a sample, all beat up. We got two nice new ones here ready to go. And uh, this job is finished. And I think we've got all the parts made for this vice now. So I can get back up with my customer and, uh, let them have his parts back. Well, there we go, guys. A uh, new set of vice jaws. That was a fun little project. Had all kinds of fun things, operations in there, using the horizontal mill, uh, using the vertical mill, the heat treating, uh, the whole nine yards. So a uh, nice, fun little project. And uh, I get up with uh, Nathan, who's the guy that I'm doing these for, and let him know we got his job finished up. He can come pick these up and hopefully get that vice back going. He told me that this vice was one that was on the family farm. His uh, grandfather or great-grandfather, I can't remember, had the vice and it, had, it was in rough shape, but they're trying to get it restored uh, and put back where they can use it in the farm shop. It's just a family heirloom to them and they want to do it. We also made a new uh, uh, screw for the vice as well in a previous video. So fun little project. All right, guys, that's a wrap. As always, Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciate the both of those help out with the analytics on the videos. And uh, hit that bell icon up there to get notification when we do post new videos. And guys, with that, uh, we will catch you on the next one. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.